Call the one you're on the line. Yeah. <laughs> All right, go. Okay, let's, a uh, little bit of background first. <laughs> I uh, uh, started painting with enamels back in the mid-70s like everybody else did. Uh, started picking up some oils. After a while, became just an oil-only painter. Uh, plateaued, quit, dropped out for 10 years. Uh, came back, tried acrylics, transitioned to that, but I've never really gotten away from oils, especially on, on skin. Uh, it just lends itself to that very well, and uh, there are a lot of advantages to oil, and there's some disadvantages also. The, the big advantage to oil is that it dries slowly. The big disadvantage to oil is that it dries slowly. Uh, the, uh, the, the slow drying allows you to blend, whereas with acrylics, you layer only. Uh, but um, if there, sometimes there are times you have to force dry oil with heat, you know, uh, crock pot, what have you. Uh, uh, there used to be a big deal about that kind of thing uh, where you could build your own drying cabinet with a 100 watt light bulb in there and stuff like that. But uh, if you want to be able to paint over uh, oil, some of you painted in oils, but it has to be dry first, that can be a big disadvantage. But uh, what I'm going to do today is a very uh, quick, down and dirty, just demo on basic shading, uh, mid-tone, and highlighting. Um, uh, start with the paint first. Now, actually, first, let's start with this. This is, um, can you see that? Mm -hmm. What am I doing? Okay. Yeah, we can okay. see it. Okay, good. This is odorless paint thinner. Okay, the big advantage to odorless paint thinner is that it is odorless. The big disadvantage is that it is odorless. Uh, <laughs> the only, the only, listen, it is, yes, it's, uh, a, it's a give and take kind of situation. Uh, to live with it in your closed up model room, um, it's, the odorless is very beneficial, but the problem with odorless is that it doesn't cut paint quite as good as the non-odorless. Uh, when they take the odor out, they also take some of the brush cleaning capability out of it too. So it takes a few more swipes in there, doing it around like this to get, to get the brush done, get it clean. But it is odorless, but it doesn't taste odorless, okay, so don't try that. Um, <laughs> I'm going to start with some basic colors here. I'm not going to use everything that I brought, but uh, this is like anything else. The number of paints that you can put together to achieve res desired results are infinite. You can use, uh, I've seen all the clinics from uh, Cartachi and guys like that who are uh, famous uh, oil painters on flesh. Uh, that's, um, he, he lays out a palette with like 15 different colors on there, purples, blues, greens all kind of stuff. I'll talk about that briefly, but I'm going to use some just basic flesh tones here. Um, going over a couple of things, this is uh, Old Holland flesh tint. This is a big deal. This is not just pink paint. Um, this is also critical, this tool right here, to, to using oils. Uh, the big advantage to a big tube of oil is like this, like you'll buy it once in your life, okay? It's this stuff, we use it in minute quantities, and this will last a lifetime. The problem with it is that it lasts a lifetime <laughs> because you need these. If you ever see any of those painting shows like on uh, NPR, something like that, Bob Ross when he was on there, uh, guys like that, Bill Alexander, they've got this palette, and they paint these landscapes on canvas. Well, they take a tube of paint, they open it up, and they squirt the whole thing out and just uh, squash, and all this paint comes out on the palette, and they use it up. And they don't have to worry about the cap drying to the tube. And when you haven't opened one of these for a few weeks, and you, you, you're going to have to come back with this and break the seal. And what makes it what makes it iffy sometimes is that this tube will not stand up to an awful lot of that. So eventually, you break the tubes. Once that happens. It's just a matter of time before the paint's dried up. There's no way you can stop it. I've even tried putting the paint under water, and it still doesn't stop it. Not entirely. It slows it down. But the longer you can preserve the tube, the better off you are, okay? Because another thing about oil colors is not like our acrylics and stuff. Eventually, they quit making these colors. Like I'm using a Winsor Newton Mars Brown, which they don't make anymore. I'm also using a Mars Orange, which they don't make anymore. Um, there's, but Liquitex used to make oil paints. This is back 20 years ago they quit doing this. There was a burnt sienna from Liquitex, which was phenomenal. I used that for all of my shading. That was my basic shade coat. 
Uh, I don't know what happened to my tube of that. It probably dried up because I broke the tube open. But if anybody has got a tube of, of Liquitex burnt sienna, I will buy it. Just putting it out there. If anybody's got one, I'll give you good money for it if you want to part with it. Because I've never been able to find a, a, an exact replacement for that. The closest thing I've got is this Windsor Newton Mars Brown. Uh, the um, other and also from one brand to another, these colors will vary, will vary greatly. Uh, there's, they, uh, everybody makes a burnt sienna. It's a red brown, but most of them are too red. The Windsor Newton's too red, my Mary's too red, uh, Holbein is too red. But anyway, I'm going to put some of this out. This is the Old Holland flesh tint. It's pink, but it's not just pink. It's a warm pink. There's brown in there. If you look at it, it's brown. Uh, the Mars Orange is the other base color. Now, what I'm doing is putting out colors now for a base coat, a, base, a basic flesh tint, flesh color. You need a lovely assistant to open your tubes. Uh, we have a volunteer. Lynn. <laughs> no. I got you, bro. No, No, that's good. I've got you. <laughs> okay, I'm going to just put some of this out, too. Uh, these two colors will make up the basic com basic combination <laughs> that was a good sweater. <laughs> thanks, thanks, Dusty. The advantage uh, of oil paint your sweater is there is no advantage to sweater. it. Now you have a painting sweater. Now I've got a gun cleaning sweater. <laughs> okay, no. Uh, lay out some of this. These two colors, along with titanium white. These will be the basics. You could probably get by with just these in black. Uh, toothpicks are important too. I only use the pink and the red. Toothpicks or paint? Okay. Uh, Okay, this is going to be mainly flesh tint, a little bit of Mars Brown. There you go. And see, so you wind up, you wind up, no matter how little bit of it you, you put on the palette, you wind up using a lot less than that. Now there is a basic. Is this visible? Oh, look at that! Okay. <laughs> look at that. The miracles of modern Technology. smile. You're on camera. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, okay. Enough smiling. Don't, Tom, don't do that anymore. Okay. <laughs> scare the children. Please. I won't. <laughs> this started off being rated PG. Okay. It's awesome. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna go with this as a basic flesh color. Yeah, it's kind of dark. Question: We what's paper are you mixing it on? This is uh, a paper palette. It's a, it's a waxy kind of paper. It comes in sheets. We'll get it at Hobby Lobby. Okay. Yep, something like that. And yeah, let's try a little bit of, let's lighten it up a little bit. Just, just white. Now, you you can also use other colors for this, um, and you can get various tones. A lot of people would use the Naples yellow for this, at, at this step. Sometimes I'll do a little bit too, but this is going to be uh, basic skin tone for a British lifeguard at Waterloo. And I've got a couple of figures here that I've, I've prepped to different, uh, I've prepped a couple of busts here, a couple of heads to uh, different uh, levels just to show what I've got, I'm going through here. The base code is uh, Reaper, a uh, rosy, uh, rosy Shadow, and I airbrushed that on. The whites of the eyes are then painted and the conjunctiva around the inside of the lids and on the inside of the eyes 
with a mixture of the same rosy shadow and a scale a scale color figure uh, figure uh, paint uh, fuchsia from their red set. It's a combination of the two to give us that pink and that would be that's that's all acrylics. The next step is to come in with a gray, like a medium gray, and what I'm using here is Reaper uh, is that Misty Gray. Yeah, dark gray. <laughs> rainy gray. Sorry, rainy. rainy gray. It's a little bit darker than the Misty. Uh, then you you come in and you hit the the whites of the eyes, leaving the out the pink outline. Is this visible? Mm -hmm. Okay. Do maybe, we need maybe have the face lay a little flatter so that the camera can see it? But yeah, that's much better. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yep. We can see that. Yep. And you get a camera man, rotate yeah. to the camera. And you get a yeah, yeah you much go. better. Yeah. <coughs> okay. We got the gist. Okay. You got this, Tom. Okay. All right. So this is the actual face that we're going to put some paint on real quick and I've gotten this one to the next level I've roughed the eyes in I've underlined the the, the top of the upper eyelid in black and yeah okay and the the eyeballs the the iris is got the uh, very first color of, layer of black on there I would norm next I would go in with a blue color whatever the iris is going to be uh, if it's blue be blue naturally, okay. But uh, I would go in with that next. But I just wanted to get these roughed in to give us something to anchor the face on. This is the first thing I do, and I'm going to paint around that. And what I'm going to do is start with a fine detail brush. Now I'm going to go into. This is burnt umber, and burnt umber tends to be just burnt umber, no matter who you get it from. It's a real, real dark brown. It uh, doesn't much matter because they all seem to be pretty much the same. And then the Mars brown is going to be my basic shadow color, and this tube is going to be gone here in just a little bit. I don't know what I'm going to do after that because I won't be able to replace this paint. Uh, no, it's the only, you know, they're all good paints. The only things I would stay away from are the <coughs> student grades from all these different companies. That's what I hear. Like the Windsor Newton is Winton, is just stay away from that. There's, ve there's very low levels of pigment in that. It's not ground very fine. Um, it's a it's, student color? Yeah, they're students. Any kind of student line from these, <coughs> stay away from that. Use their, use their fine artist. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, it yeah, may yeah. on the display someplace. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to come in. Let's 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 do a little bit of this here. So the burnt umber is the first thing I come in with. Now, this is just going. Cameraman, you should stay on. Hey, what am I paying you for anyway? <laughs> This will, is my head blocking? Nope, no. Okay. <laughs> who, said, who said that? I'm just going to go into the place where I'm going to have the deepest shadows, which is like nostrils. You can, of course, do this at any time, but I do it up front just to get it out of the way. And this is down and dirty, dirty folks. This is not something I'm going to paint here today and then put in a contest next week. You got two weeks. It may go in there in two weeks, I don't know. So once once you apply the paint, how long does it take to dry? Depends on the 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 color of the paint. Browns, umbers are, are can dry actually in some of them can dry in a few minutes. Um, the uh, most of them will be dry in a few hours anyway. Uh, reds take forever. They might not be drying in a couple of weeks. So, yeah. 
And now why that is, I don't know, because it's all linseed oil. And what happens when, when oil paint dries is the linseed leaches to the surface and evaporates. And sometimes that takes a long time. Uh, and I don't, but I don't know why it takes, it's different times for different colors. Is the particle size of the pigment? Maybe the density of the pigment or something. Maybe. I, I really don't know. You can add a drying agent, right? To a flat color. But you have flat. to Flat. Flat. Okay. Much. I'm going to go into, um, just, I'm just going to put some of this paint in the inside of the ear. Hey, you're messing with my feng shui, Rusty. No, there we go. Who said that? <laughs> Doug. I heard him. Turn it this way. That wasn't. That there wasn't Doug. Okay. And this. This is just. Also, we're all familiar with the napkins, paper towels, what have you. I prefer napkins from restaurants because they're free. <laughs> <laughs> and I find that the Chipotle napkin is. Actually, superb. It's it's a superior napkin. <laughs> Thursday night is Chipotle night at our house, and Ruthie always grabs me a handful of napkins when she's coming out of there with the with the burritos. Right, he's ordering napkins day she's at Chipotle. A cute for that one. <laughs> <laughs> Some time for the weekend paint. <laughs> Ahem. <clears throat> so I'm going to go into straight into the Mars brown right now, and start around the eyes. <coughs> you are sure picky. I'm bossy. We all knew this that's, going in. Okay? That's, <laughs> hey, I knew this was dangerous when I signed up for it. <laughs> Go in to the inside of the eyes. And the lighting here for me painting is a little bit, is not quite as strong as I'm used to, so it's a little harder for me to, some of this may look pretty bad when I come out, but this is just showing the basic technique and procedure. But I'm going to put this in. Is this visible? Nope, oh, because the bill of the hat. Okay. There you go, much better. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's a learning curve painting under video like that, so don't worry. Yeah, okay. So far my stage fright hasn't kicked in. Yet, so. Let's, I'm going to concentrate on his left side because I'm right-handed and it's easier for me to paint on this side and since I don't want to sit here for the next nobody wants to sit here watching me do this for the next five hours so I'm going to on this side concentrate and the fact of the bill of this helmet that he's wearing is so low makes this a little can I get you to focus on the other side instead of the that way you can't feel a little I see what you're saying okay yeah. yes okay same thing <laughs> but then you turned it away <laughs> hey, how about how about this? How about if I paint it and then show it? That's the camera. Do you want to just take the camera off? I was going to say, yeah. Free-handed. That's, that's free going to be all shaky and everything. Yeah, we're going to get your head in here. When we Does the camera have image stabilization? Yeah. Well, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we all wish that. <laughs> but yeah, I was going to say take the camera off and just float. Okay, I'm going to block that in right there. Now, I'm using a blocking technique for the shading. This is, uh, I'm going directly onto the acrylic undercoat with the shadow color. And I'm going to put this into, the, his, his face is craggy, lined. It's, it's, a, it's a good demo face is why I picked this guy up. Uh, I'm going to come in. and go into the creases with it. I'm going to get this in. Turn it away from the camera, Tom. That's because I'm an artiste. <laughs> okay, can you see? That's better. Okay. Do this. I'm going to come along the hairline. Every place under the helmet, oh. <laughs> somehow, somehow I get the impression that that got a good shot of my head. <laughs> Honestly, I'm going to go on the other side of your head. We can't see yeah. anything. I'm follically challenged. I understand that. The red moon there. There are craters and everything. <laughs> Mountains. There you go. 
Is that working? Yeah. Okay. That's a big scar. No. How much size brush is that? This is a this is a series seven triple R. We can talk about that a little bit. So. Knuckles? Don't worry about it, Tom. You just keep painting. We'll figure out how to get to the figure. Okay. <laughs> At some point. I feel a presence. Tom, don't worry about this finger that you're feeling right now. Am I at the doctor's <laughs> office? It's all for medical purposes. Am I getting my six-month exam? Is that what that is? <laughs> they quit doing that. I need to see how he sees it. Not this paint, not right here. There are all kinds of different oil paint mediums that you can use depending on the effect you're trying to achieve. Um, I normally don't. Uh, you can do that. And I've just about got enough. Hang on, let me get a little more down here. I'm going to go around the side of his neck. Oil paint is, if you haven't painted with it, and most of the guys that started painting in the last few years have never touched any of this stuff. Because uh, it's, it's just not the, uh, the what. It's not the main mainstream thing. It's not what most, most painters are doing now. Uh, but I call this pushing paint around because you wind up, it's a completely different animal. If you've only painted with acrylics, this doesn't work anything the same way. And it's a, and it's a learning curve. I was looking on Planet Figure one day and one of the guys on there had I don't remember the exact context, but he had discovered oil paints, and he was aghast. He uh, posted on there, my God, you can blend this stuff. But I call this pushing paint around, because you'll actually, it doesn't flow. And unless you thin it down with some kind of medium, you can get it to flow at, to some extent. But I normally don't do that. and. I, you actually wind up pushing it into crevices and, and things like that because it just won't, it doesn't flow on its own. I do take direction, so feel free. What's that? It's getting better. Not from you. Huh? I, I'm, I'm trying to see what you're doing. I'm trying to help them see what you're doing. I see. You don't need, need to worry about it. Just keep talking. Oh, that was commentary. Just like I got I'm, I'm See, it takes a little bit to get this covered because it doesn't flow. It's, it's thick and... Let's see here. And one thing, I don't like painting ears. This guy's got some big ones. Ears. Yeah, ears. Shut up, man. God. Can't take him anywhere. <laughs> Okay, now let's take uh, I think we're done with that part for right now. <laughs> How y'all been? Good. You alright? This stops after a minute. You can show the GoPro, the lens right there. It's all right. You're in the general vicinity. You're fine. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Now, our basic tone, we're going to come back with that and also block this in, too. Now, when I say blocking is that these colors are going straight down onto the acrylic undercoat. Uh, I'm not painting. That's, that's a, a blocking technique. When I come back on highlighting, I'll be putting oil paint on top of oil paint that is a, uh, a uh, wet, what they call a wet, a wet technique. And 
Yeah, let's start over here. Is it visible? I really feel like I'm getting to know you better, Tom. <laughs> Doug, I'm glad we could share these this this experience here. It's yeah, I think we're going to be real close after this. I, I don't know what kind of shampoo shampoo you're using, but don't stop. Shampoo. What's that? I actually haven't used shampoo or bought any shampoo in several years, and I haven't paid for a haircut in a long time. Which hair do they cut? <laughs> I, I actually have hair around the around the edges, <laughs> around the sides and the back. <laughs> okay, now I'm just I'm not going to bother covering this whole thing. I just want to show you how it works. Back, back, back behind the ear. This area is something I really like working on because it's easy. I like easy stuff. So basically, you're just blending the, the shadows into the the medium color now. Uh -uh. Not not doing any bleeding. I'm blocking it in. Okay. These I've got I've got stark contrast just lying right next to stark contrast. It's uh. I'm getting a little sloppy with it because I'm speeding. I'm trying to speed up a little bit. Now I'm going to come around on the bigger area on the front here so we can see kind of what this actually does. Now one thing you, you want to do, you want to paint, if you're going to try this with oils, you want to paint it out. It's real easy when you're starting off to get too much paint on the figure. It also helps with drying faster. Focus. And is it visible? Yeah. What yeah, about sometimes you, Dusty? You doing all right? I don't know what anybody's doing. Don't worry about it, Tom. You just do what you're doing. Okay. I had a burrito earlier. I don't know what that's with that. <laughs> I told you. If his lines start going just not like this, that's what happens. Oh. Uh, I hope that doesn't happen. <laughs> just painting. I'm laying down base, basic flesh color now, just right up next to the... the Mars Brown shadow. Well, that's pretty ugly right there. We wouldn't know. But it's, but it's not finished. I'll come back in. So what color are you using there? This is the combination of the flesh tint from Old Holland and Mars Orange from Windsor Newton, which you can't get anymore. Why they do that to me, I don't know. But it's something, I'm sure it's some personal vendetta they've got. Oh. <laughs> okay, we got, a, we got enough there to work with for a minute. So, let me get rid of some of this. And... Now, let's talk just a second about brushes for blending. Bring these over here. Yeah. Get the covers off of them. Now, what these are are much cheaper brushes. These are Master's Touch brushes from Hobby Lobby. And these are not our round brushes. I'm using chisel and filberts. Here's a filbert. Uh, these are br the shape of this brush. You can you can blend with just a round brush, but I find that the the filbert or something flat uh, lends itself to to uh, uh, much better to uh, blending when you start blending these colors together. Um, but just because of the flat shape, because all I'm going to do is touch where the where the two colors come together. I'm just going to. I, I, have, I, I talk with my hands. I'm sorry. Talk with your mouth. Uh, here, let me do this. Is that better? Okay. Uh, the um, 
What was I saying? Blending with the flashlight. Blending with the flashlight. Blending with the Because you're just going to touch. Oh, yeah, I remember now. Okay. <laughs> um, let's see. I'm going to... I'm going to come in where the, the two colors touch, where that, that sharp, hard contrast is, and I'm just going to touch it. Now, first off, when we started off, all of us guys, when we were learning how to do this, we start scrubbing it and rubbing it back and forth. You're at, you don't want to actually be painting with this brush, okay? You want, all you want to do is just touch it. So I'm going to touch it. Now. Okay, slow down. Slow down. Just steady yourself a little. And Breathe. Wherever, wherever you're going to start, <laughs> leave it there. Drink. Yeah, have, have a drink. Have a drink. <laughs> you did have a burrito last night, didn't you? <laughs> Is that camera autofocus? Yes. No, oh, but it zoomed in pretty close right now. Okay. Now I'm just going to take one of these brushes. Let me put this over here for a minute. Okay. I'm using one of the chisels, and you see it's got a, it's got a, a slant to it, and it comes to a sharp edge. So I'm going to come in. Let's say where these lines are touching. Right now, I'm just gonna dab at this and work with this right in this area. Like that until I soften that junction. And one thing you want to make sure now, these brushes, the blending brushes, will pick up paint as you go along. You don't want to wind up painting with this brush, so you want to keep the paint out of it. So I'm going to, I just take my finger like that and I kind of wipe it off real quick. So I haven't picked it, really picked up any paint yet. But you want to be careful when you start picking up paint, you need to clean the brush. And that's why I've got several of these because. Once you go into the thinner to clean your blending brush, you want it completely and totally dry before you put it back on the figure. Or it will cut right through that paint you've got there and all the way down to the acrylic and you've got nothing left. If there's the slightest amount of thinner left on this blending brush. So, unless you want to sit around waiting for it, you need to have several of them. So I'm just going to go in there and do that. How long does it take the brush to dry after you clean it with thinner? Uh, it can take, uh, to, to be completely dry, and just sitting in air drying by itself, it could, it could take, I don't know, 20 minutes, 15 minutes, just quite a while. You just want to make sure you've got a, a few of them around so you don't have to worry about that. On a side note, the Master's Touch brushes are one of Hobby Lobby's in-house lines and about every three weeks, in the Sunday paper, you see them 50% off. Stock up. Paper? What's that? <laughs> Newspaper? That's it's a, it's a, it's a, a uh, very old concept. You can go on their website, too. Yeah, and if you've got, if you go into Hobby Lobby, uh, get their app on your phone, because there is constantly a 40% off any regularly priced item on there. And I'll go in there and buy a, uh, something that costs 4 bucks. And walk up there, and I, I'm not ashamed to stick that in my phone in front of them. And I get 40% off of that. As long as it's on, not on sale, it's a pretty good deal. You're not ashamed of that. Nope. So does Hobby Lobby sell high-end brushes that you would need? Uh, no. No. You go to Azel for that. Now you can order them. You can order them, of course, from Dick Blick or anybody like that online. That have very, you know, large, extensive. Doing that, not me. Mm -mm. That wasn't me. That was dope. Yeah, I know. Oh, I'm. I'm sorry. What am I doing? Nothing. I mean, no. I mean, yeah. Talk about what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, right. Nothing. Okay. Um. But you don't want to. Uh, but. As far as buying expensive brushes, I'll go to Azel. I want to see the brush before I buy it, because they're not all the same. And I, Which Azel do you go to? Where do you go? Uh, one closest to my house is in Plano. And uh, 
Is it on Beltline? It's on no, that's 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 Addison. Addison. Um, uh, it's, it's on seventy five and mm -mm. Carlin. No, they moved that. Parker. I'm sorry. What am I doing? Okay. Lynn's getting bored. <laughs> Lynn. Hungry, yeah. Uh, yeah, I can understand that. El tiene hambre. Just everywhere that you've got the two colors coming together. Let's see. I'm starting to paint with this. Stop it. So. How many do you have? Four or five. Do you want to sequester that one somewhere? No, I just lick it and see if it's still wet. All right. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> Is this going to be okay? Hey, stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Keep the figures Excuse steady, us, Tom. What am I doing? Nothing. <laughs> at least not at this moment. I think Glenn, Glenn does this to me. I'm not like this normally. <laughs> yeah, you are. Glenn has that effect on a lot of people. Oh, well. Never mind. <laughs> I'm just going to sit here. Come at the bottom of his jawline. Now you think, boy, this guy's awful dark. You know, it's, he doesn't look like an English guy in 1815. He does, actually. But we're going to change that a little bit here in a minute. It's an autofocus. I don't. I'm not focusing. So oh, okay. I'm just trying to point it in a place where it will focus, and Tom keeps moving it. So. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. Focus. Yeah. See, I'm not. I'm not used to doing this at this point. No, it's. Oh. You're fine. Yeah. Sometimes with the autofocus ones, especially while painting, I find that sometimes you have to move them a little further back and then close back up, and it usually adjusts. Yep. You got it. But you can see how that's all blended together now. It's it's you've got a soft transition between these hard colors, and I want a little more of my basic flesh right here. On his cheek. Let's go into the lip here. So, let me speed this up a little. I'm going to hit on the side of, side of his nose some. <clears throat> Just a couple more blendings here, and then we're going to do some highlighting, and then some small demonstration with a couple of different colors, like some red in the cheeks and stuff like that, and then we'll be done with this. Because this is just to show a basic technique. I guess you call it a technique. I didn't. I don't know if I'm good enough to have what you call a technique. Tom, you're awesome. So yes, you do. Oh, stop apologizing. I'm sorry. <laughs> I think this is not one that. Is that the set? Now, what you can do to find out if this is still wet is, is rub it along your fingernail. And that's still wet. You can see it. You talking about the brush? Yeah, that's the one I cleaned a minute ago. The blending brush. <laughs> It makes a shiny, well, wet spot on your fingernail if it's still wet. So, can you see? Kind of. Just keep going. <clears throat> okay. He's just lobbing them out there. Who? You. Doing what? Never mind. Would you call this a stippling? You can, you can, yeah, if you're, um, yeah, I guess it's the same thing as stippling. Because you're just touching the paint. You know, I'm not moving it around at this point. I'm just touching it. Just going straight in and lifting straight back. Yeah. So when you just go in and out, it satisfies you? No, no, Doug. Let's not. Good Lord. <laughs> Did you say this is going on YouTube? What enough? 
Pull my what? Nothing. My figure steady? I see what you're saying. Okay. Okay, let me work on that. I can I can do a better job at that. And I've got too much of the shadow color here. Now here's here's another good thing about oils. This is one of the advantages. You got too much paint? This is what you need. The Chipotle, the, the almighty Chipotle yes. napkin? Yep. I had too much paint on that nose. I just got rid of it. Could you use a Taco Bell napkin? Or? You can, but they're they're flimsy. They're they're much these these are just a superior quality napkin. What about McDonald's? He wouldn't know. <laughs> yeah, I would. Okay, now I've got paint on there that's not correct, so we're going to. I'm going to draw as much of that thinner out of my painting brush as possible. I'll just run across the Chipotle napkin. Just a few strokes there and. Can we go to Chipotle for lunch? <laughs> no, I was just there Thursday night. You cannot go there until Lynn learns how to pronounce it. Which Lynn? Yeah, so I was like, which Lynn? Lynn Stahl. Who's ringing? What? You didn't even hear me say it. Yeah, you did say it. Did I? Say it. Chipotle. <laughs> right. close, it's close enough. I knew what you meant. See, that's all that matters. <laughs> that's all that matters. <laughs> and they called the Death Palace, too. Called a what? The Death Palace. I never heard that. Chipotle uh, is? Yeah, isn't that the one that's having all the problems with bad food, bad hair? Yeah, they fixed the whole lot. Yeah, but they still don't have their customer base. Yeah, I think that was in Seattle. That's why they use good napkins. <laughs> okay, I'm going to get a little more of my basic flesh up on the top of his cheeks along, along his uh... And that's with your painting brush, not your stippling brush. Right. I'm putting, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm applying paint to the figure, so I'm using my painting brush here. This is actually working, isn't it? It does eventually, even with me doing it. Um, wow, Tom, you really know what you're doing. Oh, right. I have never been accused of that. <laughs> if we could only document it. Yeah, how are we going to do that? I don't know. So now you're blending again with Yep, the... I'm doing a little bit more touching and blending. Okay. I'm going to take it down to the chin, too. So I get uh, some more of my painting brush, which still has paint in it, and I took it, I, I jabbed it into the shadow color, which I didn't intend to do. So I've got too much of that in there, but we're going to fix that. And my blending brush is still good. No, it's not. Another one bites the dust. Okay. That we're going to a filbert. Just to, we're getting away from the chisel going to a filbert. I knew it would happen eventually. The filbert's a little stiffer, but just as usable. I did. Okay. Have you ever tried this technique on smaller figures? Yeah. Yeah, back when I was painting only with oils. <clears throat> Everything was, was done that. Even little Chota Saibs, you know. Mm -hmm. Those fellas. Okay, now, that's enough for us to start. Like I said, this is down and dirty. This is not. Pull back and then back this is not a commission piece. <laughs> oh, back. Back. Yeah, that's 
the thing with autofocus cameras. What you're doing is you're pulling it back, giving it a minute to kind of catch up with what's going on, and then you could slowly go back forward. That camera's fighting yeah. with you. There it's because you're, so, you're so zoomed in, your depth of field is really short. Where's the zoom at? So it's on top. I think it's Crown. You just bought it at the hardware store? Yeah, I think it came from uh, Lowe's. Basically, it's the Earl Spirits. Turpanoid is one, isn't it? I don't like using turpanoid or any kind of turp because it's they make that by boiling pine trees, and eventually your brush winds up with a bunch of tar in it that doesn't come out. I learned that the hard way. That is a Rembrandt color, Venetian red. It's a, it's a, it's another red brown. And I'm going to put some. Uh, uh, this is Rembrandt cadmium red purple. It's just a deep red. I just want just a touch of that. To play with, and also Payne's gray is a very, very good, useful color with oils. It's a blue gray, and it's so dark it's almost black. And I think this tube that I picked up is just about. Does it help to suck on it? Oh my God! <laughs> you want to be careful with that because there are some some of these paints are extremely toxic. Oh. If it says if it says cadmium on it anywhere, you don't even really want to get it on your skin. If it says cobalt on it anywhere, that's the same thing. You don't really want to touch it. Maybe you poke it with a, with a uh, toothpick. Now, it's... <laughs> yeah. There you go. Saw something funny yesterday. There we go. Okay. All right. There we go. Thank you, man. No problem. You ever seen one of those mad, ba angry baby pictures? They got this little boy on there. I don't know how old he is. He doesn't have any teeth yet, and he's, he's looking like like that. They had photoshopped a helmet and some camo on him, and a, the, you can see the top of his webbing, his web gear, and he was like that. The caption said, "Get to the chopper." <laughs> I thought it was funny. Anyway, okay. <laughs> hey, can I have that back? You need to stick to the painting. I'm just like, I can't. Uh, now I've lost something. What was I doing? Your mind? Yeah. No, that was gone a long time ago. I quit looking for that. Uh, yes. Now let's go straight into... Highlights? Yep. Okay. Going back to my Windsor Newton. Now, a lot of people will use the... Naples yellow, you can use any kind of lighter color to do this, depending on what effect you want. Mostly, I go straight into a titanium white, just all by itself. Now, this is going to be wet on wet. This is not blocking anymore. I'm going straight onto the top of wet oil paint with wet oil paint. And let's say I want some here, and I want some... Okay. 
Now doing wet on wet, this paint picks up the, the base color that's there real quick. So you want to clean that. I'm sorry. There we go. I understood that you have, uh, you want it to stick, you want to go either wetter or drier mm -hmm. on top of it. Well, I don't really want, yeah, it's, but I see if I'm trying to paint detailed on top of wet paint, I've got to go thinner. Okay, but I'm not trying to do that. I'm just trying to get some paint on it in spots. See, because I'm going to move this around. I'm just trying. I'm just laying it down in certain spots right now, and I'm just and I'm going to move it around. See, it's all it takes is a couple of passes for me to be painting just with the base color again. So, doing this. A little bit more, but then we're going to blend because this is a pretty quick step. Show that to the GoPro real quick. What's, What's that? that got? Show it to the GoPro. So that way people see that you just put wet on wet. Like tell me where I tell me where it needs to be. Yep, that's good. You're in the general vicinity. That's good. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, just so now is that picking this up? Yep. Okay. I mean, it's not picking up like right on top like what you got going on. So that's why we're having you know because we only have limited angles that we can use here. Okay. But you're still giving, you're still saying a lot of really good information, which is helpful to people Okay. What I'll do is for right now. Now I'm going to come back with. Which one is this? Is this a dry brush? Dry brush. Okay. This Filbert. is it. Filbert. Okay. And it's a soft, you really want a soft brush for this. And I'm going to dab directly onto the highlight color to blend it, work it into the base color. And that's pretty much done right there on that one spot. I do the jowl when we keep it steady. Here? Yeah, right there. Mr. Rogers. Yeah. <laughs> Here. To get you know, the base color properly on the top of that ear, so this is going to be a little weird looking. But... Now you start painting with these brushes real quick, so you want to keep the paint off of that. Pretty much done. Would you soften the transition on the front part of the upper ear lobe? From here, it looks like there's a part of the on the top of the too. Now, you're talking about on the <clears throat> top here or the top here? The, 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 the upper part of the ear, where right. the middle part it goes. Yeah. No, yeah, that's because I didn't, that's where I said I didn't get enough of the base coat, ah, okay. base color. Okay. That's why that looks like that. But we can fix it. It's, but really, this is this is easy to do. This isn't easy to do. <laughs> no, well, you're doing no, a fine you, job at it. This is actually a video about Doug doing the video. Yeah. Is there another camera somewhere? Yeah. We should have one on Doug. Ooh, hey. Huh? Try this again. Base color. Okay. Same. More white. This is where you're talking about, Glenn, right here? No, forward to the front of the ear. Yeah. Right here? Yeah. But 
figure, now I can't tell if it's white paint or, or the light. Well, right now it's white paint. Yeah. Now, this is a good, I'm glad, I'm actually glad this happened. Because this is a good example of what happens when you now have too much paint on something. Okay? You can't, it just gets muddy and you can't fix it. You can't. Chipotle napkin. If you don't remember anything else. His portfolio must have them on his stocks. Can you, can you call it a Chipotle napkin? Chipotle? Yes. Yeah, you can go in the Chipotle store and get a burrito and some napkins. And by Chipotle, he's Chipotle. <laughs> okay, hang on. Sawgrass uses cloth napkins. They'll get upset. Yeah, uh, yeah no. That, there's, there's no point. That is overkill. It would be nice. Not if you use it to blow your nose. They won't take it from you then. Serious? Uh-huh. They won't? They let you, you let you take it home? Oh, there's an idea. Okay. Don't put it on the tray and throw it away. Yeah, I don't think I blame them much. How do they know? You're doing it in the middle of a restaurant. Yeah, but at least at, at the hotel, they burn all the sheets after the stage. Yeah, that's what they do, huh? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yep. Yeah. Burn them, uh-huh. Okay, now we start it over. Base colors down there again. I'm going to put a. See, I'm getting too much. There. Now, where did my filbert go? I'm not really taking the care with this that I normally would. Of course, you can understand. But. Anyway, now that's just it gives you an idea of how this would how this might work. And well, I like a little Tom, I like a little red in my cheeks. So we'll do red in the cheeks. I like a little five o'clock shadow. We'll do a five o'clock shadow. I only do what they tell me to do. It's not my fault. They only, I only do what they tell me to do. Okay. Now, we can go right in here and... Oh, God. No, no, Tom, it's ruined. Okay. You're right. This is that cad red-purple. And it's just any dark red. You'd have to get an awful lot of it to kill you, but it will give you brain damage. <laughs> well, they were putting cadmium in uh, children's jewelry, bringing it in from China, and when they, they discovered it, <laughs> there was some commercial help. Now, I've got a big red spot right there, okay, and I'm going to really work that in because i got too much red, okay? Well, you're right. It was ruined, but I'm going to so unruin it. not just moving paint around now, right? Just unruined it. Okay. No, I just... That was magic. ta -da. <coughs> What's that? I went the wrong way. Don't worry about that. Camera issues. But I do worry. Don't worry. Be happy. How do you put the hairs in the ear like yours? <laughs> Don't ask them questions like that. That's how I was giving you the look. Boy, you're getting it when you're looking over. We were doing the so well. Oh, all right, I'm sorry. Tinted coffee. Cops balls. Take it. I know y'all are bored. See, this is the first time I actually seen somebody paint, so oh, I'm learning oh, bunches of stuff. I knew if I was going to sit here and do an oil clinic with anybody, it was going to be here, because all we do is banter and stuff. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, not like here. We're paying attention and staying on focus and everything. I'm going to have to move Tom up a notch on my list. Of what? <clears throat> of good. What? 
Yeah, so you went from crap to stink. <laughs> <laughs> well, as long as I keep moving in a positive direction. Okay, now, what else can we do to it? Okay, I want him not to have shaved yet this morning because he might not have done that. Payne's Gray is very good for this. And like the red, you only want a little bit. But I'm going to put, and I'm kind of experimenting with this. This is way too much, but I'm, it's just the first time I've done it just like this. So it's probably not going to work. But what do we do when something doesn't work with oil paint? Chipotle. Chipotle. Use a chipotle napkin. Chipotle. 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 Chip, chip, what'd you say it was? Chipotle. It was from a first chip, chip, Chipotle. 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 Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But there, there's. <laughs> it was, there was a show called The New Normal, and the grandmother in the uh, in the show she she's uh, kind of racist, and uh, so the daughter sits there and says, or the son or whatever turns around and says. What, why, what is it that you have against finger. Mexican people? She goes, I have nothing against them. I go to the Chipotle. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, you know what? Why don't you just shut your face and watch him paint a face? How about that? This guy is awful dark. <laughs> I'm going to... Brighten him up a little bit more again. So we're going to come back with white. Quite a bit of it. And there again, I'm just working on this one side. Because I'm not trying to do this, this whole thing, it could take all day. And I'm getting hungry. So time wise. Hungry! Time wise, I mean, it looks like. Oh, what am I going to do with this piece tomorrow? Yeah, it's going to be back in the box. No, no, no. <laughs> what you if want this to was your you? current painting project. <laughs> oh, painting. you meant if I was doing it for real. Yeah. And I did, let's say I did the face today. Is that what you're talking about? Um, you got to come back and touch the face tomorrow? You do all the face in just one, one sitting? You can. Most of the time, yeah. But here's the deal. With the oil paint... Most of the paints you can come back and I can I can start working again tomorrow. So you don't let anything dry if I want come to come back and make a higher highlighter tomorrow. I've done that. But you can do it. You don't have to do it. It just depends on what you did to start with and what you want to achieve. Like a lot a lot of the figures that I've done, the smaller ones normally, the seventy five millimeters and stuff, uh, I'll come back sometimes with uh, uh, once everything's completely dry and I'll put an ultimate top highlight using uh, like the Reaper fair skin highlight which is their highest their lightest skin tone yeah. and it's just yet yeah, it's just touching you know just in spots but it, and it works real well with it so sometimes I'll do that what about gloss you probably have too much paint on it yeah it could be yeah there could be too much paint uh, also, different types of these, these these different colors will sometimes dry uh, with different you know levels of flat or gloss. You know, it's they don't all all behave the same way. Uh, if you're getting too much of that and you're getting serious about doing it with oils, is there's a uh, uh, Winsor Newton makes a medium. I think it's medium number three oil painting. I think it's number three. Uh, I've got some of that. I've had it for decades. Uh, it's still good. I have used it on occasion, but it, it, it has a flattening effect when you thin your uh, oil paint with Can that. Can I take an acrylic flattening? No. 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 That no. 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 It's, that's water base. But it's dry. Oh, yeah. Dry. I'm sorry. I'm, or something, something like Tester's Dull Coat. Or you could dull coat I, don't like, I don't like Dull Coat. I don't like Tester's Dull Coat on anything. Uh, it's real easy to get too much of it. It looks like you're looking through wax. 
you know, it looks it gives it a waxy look. I don't like I don't like using it. Besides, I've never really got a good a good dull coat from it. Mm -hmm. If you were to airbrush the tester's dull coat, a light light coat it would probably work. But well, I just have a face, a seventy five millimeter face. So yeah, really airbrush. Yeah, you can totally do that. You just gotta wait until the oil completely dries first. I usually wait like two weeks before I, you know, ten to fourteen days before I do stuff like that. Back into this area, right here. I want to. Just watch it. I don't think put it in the front pot. It's raising it. Yeah. Yeah. Put it if it's raising. Put it in the oven at three hundred seventy-five degrees for two hours, or until golden brown. What? <laughs> Again, we're going into no. See, people are listening to you, Tom, and now you say something like that. Yep, that, that next thing you know, we got people sitting there bombarding us with messages. Excuse you told, me, you told, you know what happened? You so told me to, I did that and it melted. That bald guy on YouTube told me to do this. Yeah, <laughs> that charlatan. I don't care what religion you are. <laughs> Too dark behind the ear. Going with some basic flesh tone, bring that back out. And you can highlight as much as you want, you can shade as much as you want. It uh, just depends on what you're trying to get. Just the basic technique is what I'm showing here. And if I want to, I'm going to put just a little bit of white there, and I'm going to just tap that. In. <laughs> Still not enough to suit me in some areas. What? Yeah, you tap that. So your process is basically block in your darks, then come back in. And your flash, and then tap the blend, soften the edges a little bit, and then you're going back and just paint, painting on just a little bit of either light or dark, and then tapping. You lost me, Dusty. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I'm just going to go one through. Yeah. yeah, you're right. Yeah. So you're just. I'm going to block in the shadow first. And I'm going to block in the basic flesh, and then I'm going to use a wet technique to put the highlights on. And then a, a dry technique to blend them. Okay. Yep, exactly. Let's see, I come back with more highlights. I've got a very sharp, hard contrast right here that I wouldn't leave just like that if I were serious about painting this. I also where, where, want, you, where are you talking about? I'm talking about right here. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. Under the eye? Yeah. I could work that out. It would take a while, which I don't really want to get into because everybody's getting bored of this, tired of it already. So when you're getting to the smaller areas, like let's say the lower eyelid on the eye, yeah. you're going to use smaller brushes to get up in there, right? The smallest one I'm going to use is this triple lot. Windsor Newton, but I'm, I'm gonna, talking about to do the the uh, stippling <clears throat> blending. Yes, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It's like, and as far as the eyelid goes, I'll show you what I do with that. What am I doing? You're just moving around. I, I know it. I'm just. It's because I'm having to prepare, prepare brushes again. Move this where I can see what I'm doing here. Now, eyelid, lower eye, lower eyelid. That's a mighty nice finger you got there. Where? Which one? Oh, He's about to focus on my finger. Oh, I got gotcha. you. I see. I don't know what I'm doing. 
You told me not to worry about it. You I told know. me just to paint. I just paint. That's what I'm doing. A lot of stories about Chipotle and stuff. He looks, see, that look better? That looks better, doesn't it? Okay. Now that, now, you know, depending on how sharp a contrast you want, I may not blend that. And I want to blend it a little bit on the bottom, but on the top, where the basic flesh on the eyelid comes together with the shadow under it, I may leave that alone. Depends. So let's see what this does. The filbert's too thick. Do I have a chisel that is dry? Close enough. Okay. I've got to turn this this way. You find that that side of the face, since you're right-handed, is the hardest one to paint? Yes. Absolutely. You paint the hard side. Yeah, so you could see the camera when it was over there. You could right. see it with the camera when it was over there. <laughs> but it's okay. Actually, they work the same way. It's just a little more, it's just a, not as easy. But a painting eyes, painting the actual eyes is another thing. It's, it's a lot harder to do on that side. Because not only do you have a dominant hand, you've got a dominant eye. And it's almost always the same as your hand. Like my right eye is way dominant over my left eye. And when you're looking at, if you're right-handed like me and you're looking at his left eye, you're looking with both your eyes at this, but you're also looking across the other side of the face so you can position it. It's much easier to position that eye correctly if you're working on his left eye. You move over and start working on his right eye, you're actually looking at it only with this eye. And because you look, see, you yeah, see what I'm saying? Keep it oh, sorry. And it's, uh, so you're looking at it pretty much only with your dominant eye at that point. And so it's, it's harder to paint it and keep it in proper relation with the other eye, keep them looking in the same direction, okay? So a lot of guys will turn the figure upside down, so they're still using their dominant eye to see everything. And... Uh, that works. I, I do that sometimes. Sometimes that doesn't work. Sometimes you, you just got to play with it. Sometimes uh, that people will go back and just and redo it. They'll they'll touch it up until they've got it right, and that's usually what. But anyway, that's that's pretty much it. It's uh, outstanding. It's just just real simple. You block in. You touch it and blend it. You wet. You put the highlights in wet. And if you if you don't like the way it is, you wipe it off. You do it again. And uh, the other, another really good thing about oil paints that we didn't touch on is I like the way they smell. So, I thought that was your shampoo. No, that's linseed oil. I like the way I like the smell of linseed oil. So, it right. smells like art. Okay, it smells like inspiration. What's the advantages of using the oil over the acrylics? Well, like I said, for a face. Oh, for a face. Blending. Blending and also, it, it gives it. A more lifelike look. Sometimes, sometimes it's, it's yeah, it's a little bit shinier. It's uh, anything that is a, was a, is a, of an organic nature, like leather, faces, things like that. They benefit from being painted in oils. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So anyway, I'm done. Uh, that's that's just in a.